In this episode, we're going to return to the AWS global infrastructure and start with some of the architectural basics. Let's see what your on-premise application looks like after you've moved it to AWS. Your application could have been a Windows or Linux application running on a virtual machine on-premise, and the database can run on a managed service called RDS. So your application is going to run on a virtual machine in AWS on our Elastic Compute Cloud service, or EC2. So each individual machine is called an EC2 instance. The database is going to run on a relational database service called RDS. If this is a mission critical application, our best practice recommendation is to run a copy of the application in all three availability zones. And another copy of the database in AZ2 and in AZ3. And don't forget, the availability zones are all joined together with multiple diverse Metro Fiber connections as well. For this drawing, I've only drawn three connections between the availability zones, but there are many more paths than that. So the resilience model for this is quite simple. If something happens to availability zone one, then you have two more copies of your application running over here. So let's say there was a power or cooling problem in availability zone one, then the other two copies of the application pick up the slack and your application can run again. So the way this works, you typically use a software load balancer such as the AWS Elastic Load Balancing Service to uh, sit in front of your application and check the health. So here we'll use a application load balancer or ALB in front of the application. And the application load balancer service is constantly checking the health of your application and will redirect traffic if there's a problem. Let's say there's a problem with the application in availability zone one. The application load balancer health check will pick up on that and then it can redirect the traffic. So the traffic will get redirected like this. So let's say the application in question is for paying your taxes and you're just before the tax deadline and as a customer, you're trying to use this application and there's a power outage for one of the data centers. What happens is the application load balancer would detect that, flip traffic away from the affected availability zone and then the application can recover. So you might see a short interruption and then you can get on and pay your taxes. So thinking back to the board of risks that we spoke about earlier, let's see how the multi-AZ application responds to those risks. The first risks are the physical risks. So by using infrastructure in multiple availability zones, we're taking care of the physical risks such as server crashes and disk crashes. We also made sure that we had multiple diverse fiber paths, so we're taking care of fiber cuts as well. And also, we're mitigating cooling problems by using multiple facilities. And if there's a fire in one data center, you've seen how we can flip over and use the other data centers as well. And lastly, we spoke earlier about how there's diverse power supplies to the different availability zones, so we're also mitigating the risk of power loss as well. In the last video, we explored how the AWS region model takes care of the environmental risks. So we can cross off floods, earthquakes, and tornadoes as well. So this is what we call a multi-AZ architecture. And the ability to fail over if there's an availability zone problem is a fundamental important resilience concept on AWS because it deals with so many of the risks you might have faced in the on-premise world. Just by following our best practice, you get a lot of resilience out of the box without all the engineering effort and teams required to achieve the same thing on-premise. Before we move on, I want to mention a couple more things about regions. Firstly, when your application teams are using AWS, they're not really thinking about physical data centers. The way they think about deploying infrastructure is in terms of availability zones. They don't care about the particular physical data center that's abstracted away from them. The second point is related to the different types of AWS services. Understanding the differences between them is another key thing in terms of resilience. The EC2 instance is an interesting example because your application engineers decide exactly where they want to deploy it. I want one EC2 instance in availability zone one, 
or I want 100 EC2 instances in availability zone 2. What this means is that the resilience of that application running on those EC2 instances is largely in the hands of you as the customer. You get to make choices about how many instances you need and where to place them. These are service deployment choices. If you were running a mission critical core banking application for a major bank or a government digital identity platform, you absolutely could deploy it on just one huge EC2 instance in a single AZ. But we would strongly advise against that. Remembering what we've just learned about the multi-AZ architecture, it's better for resilience to do it in all three availability zones. There are other kinds of AWS services where the deployment model works differently, where the resilience across multiple availability zones is managed by AWS for you. Take S3, Amazon Simple Storage Service, as an example. S3 is our highly durable internet scale object storage service. When you put an object like a PDF bank statement into S3, it handles storing that object resiliently across multiple availability zones for you. Unlike with EC2, you don't specify which availability zone you want to store the data in. You just put your data into the S3 service at the region level and AWS looks after replicating it across availability zones behind the scenes to provide resilience and durability. So the resilience model works quite differently between a service like EC2, where you control the instance placement, versus a regional service like S3, where AWS manages the cross-region replication. It's very important that your application architects and engineers understand these differences when designing resilient architectures and choosing which AWS services to use. They need to know whether they are responsible for deploying across AZs themselves or if AWS handles that replication for them with the service. Stepping back, the way we can think about it, there's this global stoke, then it's divided into 34 regions deployed around the world, and that footprint grows most years, but each region is further divided into at least three availability zones, as we've shown. And within each availability zone is where we actually deploy the software and resources that power the AWS services. So we're subdividing and reducing the radius of any potential impact over and over through this nested model. Global, region, availability zone, and service. In the second half of this series, we're gonna go back to the foundational layer of that resilience equation, back to the bits that are our responsibility and see how our service teams and operational practices mitigate some of the resilience risks. See you there.